Welcome to Speaking of Men. You're watching public access television from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm your host, Mike Rivas. Joining me today on Speaking of Men is producer Mike Kruchowski. And uh, after 52 uh, programs, uh, Michael's decided that it's time to uh, take a little break and uh, drop back 10 yards and uh, get a little bit of a reassessment on uh, what the program's about and uh, where it might go in the future. Um, uh, Mike, um, we've been on not just uh, speaking of men, but uh, our previous program, Channel 99 Review, for two years. We started uh, September 19th, 1990, and uh, we're wrapping up today. Should be August 28th, 1992, so we're just short of two years. Um, from time to time, I've taken the opportunity, as I am well able to, to uh, have a, a short statement of philosophy to reaffirm some of the principles and the values that we've tried to espouse on this program. And this is one of those days. Um, as we look back over the two years of programming, we have addressed what we think are some really important issues for both men and women to uh, take a look at and look into themselves to uh, find whatever they can to, to help combat some of these problems. I, uh, in talking with Mike before the program, uh, there are five pro uh, problems that I think men need to, s to spend some time thinking about how they might change uh, our society. I'm going to rattle these off. Uh, rape, domestic uh, violence, child abuse, the absent father syndrome, and sexual harassment. Uh, we've had programs on each one of these. Uh, the issue of rape was the, the topic of our very first program on Speaking of Men when we, when we revamped and reformatted our show. Uh, as you'll remember, Mike, we had uh, Mark Taylor and Lil Lillian Biffle from the Albuquerque Rape Crisis Center come down and talk about how prevalent it is in our society and the sorts of things that men can do to help change that, that problem. We, <laughs> we sure did. We sure did. That's, that's absolutely um, right. You know, it, it strikes me that uh, there's often a very simplistic uh, uh, recommendation. How do men stop rape? And the answer might be, well, just stop doing it. Um, I think that the, the problem is a lot more complex than just saying, don't do it. Uh, we have to understand uh, the motivations that uh, drive men to, to rape women. Uh, the ways that uh, men and women reinforce that kind of behavior in our society. Over the, the past uh, two years, I've tried to bring the message that explaining a problem does not excuse a problem. And uh, that's something that's hard for a lot of people to understand, that if we explain why men rape, it's not saying that it's okay. And so our program today is, uh, in, in one aspect, trying to, to take a stand on some of these important issues. Uh, guys, if you think that forcing a woman to have sex is okay, you're dead wrong. It's, uh, it's against the law. It's uh, something that's not only going to uh, land you in jail eventually, but is going to destroy a lot of lives. Uh, it can affect the people around you, the people that you love. Your mother could be a rape victim, your sister, your daughter, uh, your wife or girlfriend. So it's not something that happens just to somebody else. It's, some, it's a problem that we all need to come together to try to combat so that people in our lives uh, aren't hurt. You're making notes furiously. No, I'm, what I'm not making notes furiously. You're doodling. <laughs> I, um, I was just listening to you uh, talk about it. rape as an issue, and of course domestic violence is a, is a topic that we've covered on the program. And, uh, sure. Uh, it seems that uh, in a lot of cases there is a, a common underlying factor that... Uh, drugs and alcohol seem to be a big one. Sure, in both of them. Uh, if you don't understand how drugs and alcohol affect you. In all five of them, actually. Sure. Um, it's important to, uh, to get a better understanding of it. But there's also an underlying problem of, of men who seem to hate women. It's a real serious problem. 
uh, domestic violence. We had a, uh, a case here in the state uh, up in uh, Chimayo about two years ago. Um, Ricky Abeda killed six or seven people, including a child, I think, under a year old. We tried to get the message out again that it's not acceptable. You just can't be doing that sort of thing. And there are things that men can do to help avert situations like that. Uh, Mike and I are both in a weekly men's group, and one of the things we do is commiserate about the, uh, the things that are happening in our lives. And we try to support one another and try to help one another understand what we're facing so that we can find constructive, nonviolent ways of solving interpersonal problems. Uh, those kinds of groups are out in the community for men. Uh, there are programs for uh, uh, men who are having problems dealing with anger or uh, issues of uh, hating women. Uh, there are non-judgmental sorts of resources and programs, and I urge every man who has, who has ever had this urge to strike out in some way, either sexually or physically, uh, against a woman to take a look at what's out in the community to help you uh, change your uh, attitudes and behavior. Uh, child abuse. Uh, we hear an awful lot about child abuse these days. Um, there are a lot of explanations of why men abuse their children, either physically, sexually, or emotionally. Um, again, the explanation is not an excuse. Uh, if you are experiencing problems like that, there are groups to help you. For instance, uh, Parents Anonymous is a real good uh, resource. Uh, their motto includes a statement, when you are afraid of hurting your child. Um, every parent feels frustration with their kids from time to time. Uh, it's when that frustration turns into violence. Pinching or slapping is, is a form of violence. Uh, even spankings, uh, those are things that teach children the message, give children the message that violence is a way of getting your way, inflicting violence on other people. And I think what our, our society is trying to work towards is a, a less violent, more peaceful society. And uh, we, what, what, what we want to do is acknowledge the fact that there are those issues, those problems out in the community, they are rampant. And this is not to say that that all men, or even a vast majority of men, are uh, rapists, murderers, uh, or child abusers. I honestly believe that, that uh, the, the vast majority of men are decent, honest, caring, loving people who are feeling a lot of confusion about what's going on in their lives. Dumbfounded, huh? No, you I... You can I, say something. Well, <laughs> no. um, you were uh, just doing, you know, such a good job of it, I was going to... Sure. Um, in uh, our last program with Gary Lucas, who uh, talked about fighting for custody of his child, he talked a lot about um, what happens to children when their fathers disappear after a divorce. Uh, that Disappearance Act can take a number of forms. Um, the, the, the form that gets the most attention these days is uh, delinquent child support. I mean, there is a uh, widespread perception that we have a lot of deadbeat fathers. Now, Don Chavez, who uh, recently uh, just finished serving uh, two or three years on the U.S. Interstate Child Support Commission, says that the U.S. Census statistics show that when fathers get joint custody of their children after a divorce, that 90.2% of the fathers pay their child support in full on time. He said that the payment rate was, uh, the non-payment rate was roughly equivalent to the uh, unemployment rate. Right. The strongest predictor of, of uh, a non-custodial parent paying or not paying child support is their uh, economic status, whether they were employed during the past year. If you aren't employed 
it's uh, impossible to uh, pay child support. And, and that's uh, pure and simple. Again, we have a, a very strong message that men don't care about their children. I think the statistics are showing that men do care about their children, but at some point, they give up hope. They give up hope of maintaining emotional and physical relationships with their children. Uh, so what we have is uh, not only fathers who are absent because they're not paying child support and helping uh, maintain their child's standard of living, we have fathers who simply walk out of their children's lives. Uh, I can understand the, uh, the motivation to do that. I've been at that point many times, and fortunately, something has helped me pull through in trying to maintain the relationship with my oldest son. But the simple fact is, again, if you explaining it doesn't excuse the behavior. And, and guys, you need to find the support out in the community, and the support is there. But you go out into the community and find the support to keep in touch with your kids and maintain that relationship. Uh, once you lose it, it's almost impossible to, uh, to regain it. And I think that was the, the uh, underlying motivation that uh, uh, Gary Lucas mentioned when he talked about uh, fighting for custody of his son, Jacob. And finally, we have the, uh, the issue of sexual harassment. Uh, the tailhook uh, convention in Las Vegas has certainly catapulted that to national prominence, uh, the Clarence Thomas hearings. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, news stories about men and women and the problems we have relating to one another. Uh, sexual harassment of women is, again, uh, against the law. And if you, just don't, if you don't believe that, uh, there are a lot of cases where men have lost their jobs. They've lost their standing in their uh, communities, professional communities. Um, there are even men who have paid s severe fines for doing things that just are stupid. And making uh, sexual favors a condition of employment is stupid. I can't believe that any man in his right mind would think that he's somehow going to get away with that. I want to get off of all these negative things, the negative issues, uh, messages about men. I don't believe that most men are rapists. I don't believe that uh, most men willingly sexually harass women. I think that there's a lot of confusion out in, in the community. That's one thing that Mike and I have tried to address in our shows uh, to talk about what are the things that uh, contribute to this confusion. These messages have been for men. I, I think we ought to focus on some messages that are for both men and women. For instance, uh, I have frequently said that men's issues really are the same as women's issues. When I talk about men's issues, I don't talk about father's rights. I talk about a desire for equal treatment under the law. When I go to uh, court, I expect to have the same kind of treatment afforded me as the women. And I expect that to be fair treatment for, uh, for both of us. I'm expecting uh, to be judged as an individual, to be free from sexual stereotyping. And there's a lot of this going on today. There's a lot of sexual stereotyping about men. And uh, I have two messages, one for the women, that uh, men are perhaps not able to articulate these quickly and very well, but they are recognizing that they're being stereotyped, that they're being, uh, uh, they're, th that they're facing biases, both social uh, prejudices and legal biases, and uh, they're getting kind of angry about it. So the, the, the issue for, for women, or the message for women is that Yes, sexism is wrong from whatever the source, and if the, the source is from women, women need to stop and look at how they contribute to sexism by the attitudes that they hold about men. Now, men have to deal with this whole issue of the blame game. Uh, we all know the word misogyny, hatred of women. Uh, it 
seems to be an underlying factor in, in problems like rape and, and domestic violence. Uh, most people don't know the parallel term for hatred of men, misandry. Uh, but there is a good deal of hatred of men out in the community. Um, my message for men is you don't have to accept that blame. Y you like to expound on this often, that you're not willing to carry the burden of that blame, uh, the guilt, for what might have happened 100 years ago or 2,000 years ago. Well, I, I think that it's important for men and women to see each other as equals and to not be caught in the polarization of opposites. And, uh, uh, caught you know, up in if, the rhetoric. Well, you know, if men are powerful, women are disempowered because of that. Men and women can be powerful. Men and women can be powerful as the individuals they are. And they can both be powerless, too, in their own ways. Well, it's, it, it, my point was it's just important not to get caught in opposites. And uh, I think that that's a big part of the blame game, you know. Sure. If, if men are assertive, women can't be, or um, vice versa. And I think that uh, a lot of men carry the, I think that women project their own dark sides onto men a tremendous amount instead of accepting, accepting it for themselves. Sure. And uh, so I, th I think it has to be a situation of cooperation where men and women have a dialogue for the common interest, if nothing else, uh, in situations of, of domestic <clears throat> violence, child abuse, those kinds of things. Uh, men and women have to get to the point where they can see past their own differences to the best interest of the Dar child involved. So. Darlene Boisvert, uh, who, who came and talked about the psychology of women, had an interesting observation. She said that the differences among women are not um, uh, far outweigh the differences between men as a group and women as a group. That if you took the average man and the average woman, that they seem to have common values, common concerns, uh, a desire for respect for one another. It's the fringe elements in both, among both men and women that represent those polar opposites. If we would start looking at those areas where we have common ground and start with that as the basis for discussions rather than look for maybe the five or ten percent where we violently disagree, we'd get a lot further today in, in resolving this supposed gender gap. I think that's where the, the perception of gender gap comes from. You take the most extreme man and the most extreme woman on the other opposite extreme and well, it's the playing off of opposites by the media. There's no focus in uh, most radio, television, newspaper reporting on common solutions. Uh, it's, you know, most of it's just knee-jerk, knee -jerk, sure. lowest common emotional denominator for the greatest uh, amount of hysteria and effect and, and uh, hysterical effect. And that's, that's what it is. I think what the program has tried to do is look at solutions. You know, I mean, you look at rape. Um, a real small percentage of the people who are actually doing violent, of men who are doing violent rape uh, is, is very small, you know, crawling through windows, jumping out of bushes. Most, uh, most rape is, in, is, in, is like the, uh, the date rape category. Is the date rape. Uh, both people are, are, are a little bit drunk or loaded, and, it's, and, and neither one of them has gotten uh, a sense of boundaries and good communication, sure. and, and uh, they have not received, uh, obviously, if you look at uh, uh, the state of sex in America and the state of illegitimate birth in America, somebody's not receiving parenting somewhere. And um, uh, that's, that's... They don't learn they don't, responsibility. They don't, they don't learn responsibility, responsibility because they don't know any responsible people. And so things like this happen. So I think the program has tried to focus on solutions. And we've tried to remain non-hysterical um, uh, towards that and try to look at, at uh, what people can actually do to change things for the better. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we uh, fight for time here in the last well, couple of minutes? No. I had one more topic to talk about, and this relates to uh, one of the primary reasons for my uh, decision to stop actively producing the program, and that is the issue of activism. Mike and I and uh, a loyal crew 
whom you will see in the outro during our credits. Uh, our crew members are all there. Um, they have been spending their Saturdays and Friday evenings uh, to coming down here to support us in doing this program and, and getting some uh, positive messages out. And they're people who basically put their mouths, you know, put their money where their mouths are. They, yeah, they care enough to show up. They care enough to and we, come and we, contribute. We don't get it. We've had, uh, how many shows, Mike, you've done? Uh, we've done approximately 80 over two years. And we've done it specifically as a men's program. We've done about, this is the 52nd one. Right. And, In this uh, series. And we've had a real cross-section of community men and women who have been involved in, re who are giving their time, just as the crew here is, uh, uh, towards trying to create a better society, who are out there knocking doors, creating organizations, uh, handing out leaflets and flyers, talking to people, trying to do gatherings, uh, researching data and information. So, you know, and society is, soci there are uh, a lot of points of light out there. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and, and we've been, I, I'd like to thank personally all the people who have uh, spent time with us on the telephone and filled out our flyers and, and given us input to uh, be able to create this program because it's really been about community and about the community of men. Right. In a, the, the, the important thing about the people that who have contributed here is that they're not whining and complaining about how terrible things are. They recognize that there are serious problems out in the community, and they're willing to take their time and money and energy to do something positive. They don't snivel. They're they not snivelers. Snivel. That's right. And I would urge men who are interested in seeing more programming like this to investigate what it would take to produce your own program. Um, it's time for somebody else to pick up the ball. We're going to talk a little bit about what the future holds for us. The question is, what does the future hold for you? If you recognize problems out there and you fail to take action to solve the problem, you become part of the problem. So let's talk a little bit about what we've got uh, coming up here. Um, well, we're going to do, uh, what are you going to do, Michael? You're going to run reruns for a better part of a year so people can check their listings and they sure. can uh, continue to see programs that we've shot in the past. And uh, you and I are going to drop back and talk about it a whole bunch and see uh, where we think the men's movement uh, or where we think this program is going to be uh, or what we might be able to contribute with it in the future, what kind of topics are important or what kind of messages need to be to be out there. Is, is that pretty much? That's pretty much it. Um, at another time, perhaps on another day, uh, you will in find... In another place and time. <laughs> you will find, uh, speaking of men, being rebroadcast. Uh, there's some possibility that we'll do some excerpts from our earlier series, the Channel 99 Review. We had some really excellent guests on that program as well. Um, we're going to drop out of actively producing a regular uh, weekly program. There are some, uh, <laughs> there is, a, we're down to about four minutes now, aren't we? Um, you made me lose my train of thought. Uh, there is a possibility that we'll do some single programs in the future, uh, perhaps some uh, very, very short excerpts from programs, uh, something on the order of one minute as uh, fillers, as food for thought during the week. Um, basically, I'm going to spend the time thinking, just relaxing and thinking and enjoying the time with my family. Uh, and speaking of family, uh, my mom and dad are, are visiting this week and uh, to see us and the, and the children. Uh, my dad's here in the, in the studio, uh, not joining us on the set, but uh, joined us for the day to basically see us out on our last program. And I'd like to, uh, to thank both my parents and my family. Without whom which you would not have been possible. Well, the kind, right? of, person, the kind of person that I am uh, relates to the is related to the values that I got yeah. as I was growing up. Uh, strongly independent, 
thinking problems through and not being afraid to take a stand on an issue and not being afraid to take action to solve a problem. Well, and you know, I'd I like to. I'd, well, I'd like to uh, take the part, uh, take a moment on the part of myself and for the crew, and uh, tell you that uh, uh, it's amazed me in the time that I've been involved with this program uh, that you've been able to hold it together. Uh, I've seen you put a tremendous amount of work and personal dedication and time into making this thing work. And uh, if you had not done that, it wouldn't have been here. And none of us would have been. And I think we would have all missed a, uh, a real chance to, uh, to hopefully uh, contribute a little bit of uh, positivity to, to, uh, to the Albuquerque area anyway, at hopefully, least. <laughs> at least. And sure. uh, so, you know, I, I tell people that uh, I hang around with you because uh, my, my personal output goes up 25% just by being in proximity, and I, I admire but, that. So. But your hair is not falling out. <laughs> That's There's a true. story about My this hair is the, not falling out. I, I can give is. you some of mine, get some <laughs> glue, and we'll... Uh, it's time to relax, and it's time to take a step back to see uh, where we can go from, from here out. Um, Wrap it up and start I, telling them bye, Mikey. Boy, we're down, we're down to about a minute, aren't we? And uh, it has been fun looking back. It has not been fun doing this, I guarantee you. Show um, them your ball spot. No, no, no. I got it combed over quite nicely. Um, and it is growing back. But you know, there were times when the crew literally was in tears way back in the beginning. I mean, we, we stopped the cameras and the, and the tape recorders and we walked into the control room and the director's head was down on the table and crying and I, my blood pressure was at, at uh, 200 over 100, and uh, it just hasn't been fun. But it's fun looking back at what we've accomplished, and I think that uh, we've done quite a lot. Well, this is uh, Michael Kruchowski, and I'm Mike Rivas. And for all the crew at Speaking of Men, we want to tell you to stand if you can. You run if you have to, but whatever you do, don't quit. Hope to see you again in the future. Check uh, for listings for upcoming programs. Bye-bye.